Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. Yes, I am going here. While I pray for our president, President Donald John Trump, every day, his wife, his children, I pray for their blessing and safety, provision, protection. I pray that he will hear from heaven. There are certain things that I look for for any president and any administration, and those are, are you fulfilling the campaign promises that you made? Thus far, I will share two key things that were, what's the word I want? Well, two key initiatives, we'll say, are two positions that were of great concern for me in the past election. One was a president that would be pro-Israel, and the other would be pro-life. Yes, there are other things that I'm concerned about, but those were two major initiatives that I was concerned with. And it wouldn't be in priority of order because what's more important than protecting the life of the innocent and the unborn? So thus far, we've seen some good things. I was thrilled when President Trump pulled out of the JCPOA. That would be the Iran nuke deal. That should have never been made. That was a horrific deal. I was thrilled when on December 6, 2017, he announced to the world against great opposition that Jerusalem was the rightful eternal capital of Israel. That's truth. I was thrilled on May 14, 2018, when he moved on the celebration of the 70th year, the beginning of the 70th year of Israel being reborn, that he moved our embassy, the U.S. Embassy, to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. I was thrilled when on Purim of this year, he announced that Israel had sovereign rights to the Golan Heights. Significant. I was thrilled weeks before when he changed the classification in the U.S. annual report regarding the Middle East that the Golan Heights, it used to be, was Israeli occupied, meaning it, it was really going against international recognition to be an Israeli controlled. And then during Purim, he, he announced that Israel had sovereign rights to the Golan Heights thrilled with all that. It's yet to be seen what will happen with the peace plan if the bride of Christ even sees that because we're just not sure that we'll still be here for that. Leak, the leaks say, and I know because there was an article shared with me that I shared recently from September of 2018 when President Trump actually said that I, I'm not going to put in quotes. I'm going to give you the gist of it because I don't have it in front of me. But that if, if the parties were for a two-state solution, he would be. And he actually, basically the what he said was he was in favor. He thought that would be a more favorable solution, a two-state solution. And in the leaks, I know there are many um, honored and great sources out there saying he'll never do that, he'll never do that. Look at what he's done already. I know that the Orthodox and religious in Jerusalem have called him Messiah-like. I know that. His face is on the coins. I know about uh, all the YouTube videos about the Cyrus anointing. Let me remind you, Cyrus was a pagan king, um, but he was used for God's purpose. Amen. God raises and deposes kings, not just believing kings and, and Jewish kings. Uh, kings, but God raises and deposes leaders. God is in control. And things are happening in these final moments of the end of days. The word tells us that. So we, we're following and we know we are in that season. Praise God. We're going to be caught up out of here, believers, very, very soon when the bridegroom comes for us, for his bride. In the leaks, it says that, that 85 to 95 percent of the West Bank will be annexed off for a Palestinian state and part of East Jerusalem. That is never good. I say this all the time. No man, no woman, no leader, no nation, and no League of Nations has the right to alter the boundaries that God established for himself and his people, Israel. That's 
fact that that's truth from the word of God. I will never support that. And even though it's rumored that it that the peace plan is economic and st- and, and status and and there are good things. Could it possibly be that the president has done these things to garner the trust and support of Israel, and then they'll almost feel compelled or forced? You know, when someone makes a deal with you and they do all these good things, and and you buddy buddy. It, listen, it's the art of negotiation. I don't know. I don't know. We will we will have to wait and see. There is no political solution to a spiritual problem. I say that all the time. I'm not speaking for or against anyone, but in this one that I'm getting to, I am outraged. I am outraged, and I am calling for our president, and I'm asking believers to rise up and call for a campaign promise to be delivered. And I'm not talking about the wall. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Since President Trump has been in office, Planned Parenthood, has been funded by our tax dollars, by our government, to the tune of approximately $1.5 billion. You heard that right. Under the Trump administration, Planned Parenthood, the leading state sponsor of the murder of the unborn, has been funded to the tune of $1.5 billion. Approximately 3 million unborn babies have been horrifically murdered. And this is an outrage. Just one promise, one quote I want to share for you from February 25th, 2016, at a Republican debate in Houston. Quote, this is President, now President Donald Trump. Quote, I would defund it because of the abortion factor, which they say is 3%. I don't know what percentage it is. They say it's 3%, but I would defund it because I'm pro-life, end quote. That's our current president and his quote. Pray for him, but I want to hold him accountable to this. Why? Is our president, why has our president not defunded Planned Parenthood? Why are our tax dollars going for the murder of the unborn? Why are believers celebrating the heartbeat bill in Ohio? I get, I get what some of you are thinking. Well, at least it stops abortion after they can detect a heartbeat. And isn't that a good thing? Isn't it good to even save one life? It is, it is a good thing to save even one life. Absolutely. If my life and ministry causes through the work of Holy Spirit, because I don't save anyone, I don't heal anyone, I give all the glory to God, Holy Spirit does that work. If one person comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because of the ministry that God has called me to, praise God, I rejoice in that, because re- that's everlasting. You're absolutely right about that. We rejoice for every child saved. We never rejoice over calling sin righteousness and righteousness sin. Over calling good evil and evil good. Life begins at conception. And the moment we move off that barometer, well then, can we say it's okay if someone is on hospice care that we end their life? Like, where's the, where do we stop once we move off God's moral standard? Who sets that standard? He does. His word. Brothers and sisters, that's not a good thing. And you know, as well as I do, that they will simply lie and deceive because it is the same spirit that caused the ancient people to sacrifice their children in the fire to the false gods, Chemish and Molech, that went through the Arch of Baal, that, by the way, the UN displays every time there's a major meeting. They displayed it in Washington, D.C., when the Brett Kavanaugh hearings was going, and I don't care what you say, it was not about the character of the man. It was about wanting to murder unborn babies. That's exactly what that whole debate and whole debacle and embarrassment was about. It's the same spirit, the evil spirits, the wicked spirits, Hasatan himself behind destroying innocent lives. That's, that's what it is. Let's call it what it is. And I, for one, have written to my leaders in the White House and in Illinois. And I I implore you, stand up, raise your voice. Let's call for this campaign promise to be fulfilled. Stop 
funding this wicked organization known as Planned Parenthood. In fact, stop funding all abortion clinics everywhere. In fact, make it illegal to murder the unborn. And, and for those who say in those rare, rare cases where a woman has to give birth or die, if, listen, that, that's a slippery slope we go down. If truly a baby has to be born early, then you do everything you can to save the life of the mother and the child. It shouldn't be we're choosing one over the other. You do what you have to to save the life of the mother and the child and then allow God to be God. Amen? We do not support the murder of the most innocent and defenseless among us. God, have mercy on us. We are truly in the final moments of the end of days. This is vile. This is despicable. Do, do you realize our tax dollars are going to fund the murder of the most innocent and defenseless among us? This is, I, I, I don't, I've got to stop because I've got to go, brothers and sisters. I have to pray. And it's not me. This is a righteous anger that is rising up. And I'm going to, I, I got to tell you this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I have to tell you, the Lord is angry. His fierce wrath and judgment is coming upon, upon a wicked world. His time of mercy, it is great. It is great. But that day is coming to an end. And very soon the last goyim is going to come to faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, in Jesus Messiah. And then we are caught up out of here. And for those who think they're going to be left behind and they're going to help others, you don't even know. Do you know it? At one point, one fourth of the population is going to be decimated. They're going to be think, as great as God's love is. And his love and mercy is amazing. It's perfect. His wrath is equally as perfect. And he's coming. It is time. It is time. Shame on us. Shame on the body of Christ for not raising up and raising our voices. You, I, I've had people who claim to be Christian Get in my face and say, I disagree with you. I agree with abortion. You're wrong. No, I'm not wrong because it's not me. It's the word of God. It's murder. It's horrific. We've allowed the culture to infiltrate the church. And we've called what's good evil and what's evil good. Shame on us. Shame on us. You want to talk about change of mind and, and, and repenting? Turning from, you want to talk about that? As believers, as believers, as those who grow in the purity of the truth of God's word. Yes, we're not saved by works. We're not kept by works, but we are saved unto good works. That's Ephesians 2.10. I praise God that we are saved by grace through faith. I will never deviate from the truth of that gospel. That it's Christ's burial, death, and, and resurrection. He rose again on the third day. He shed his precious blood to pay the debt for our sin. Praise God, for we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I am not perfect in performance, but I am perfect in position. But as believers, as new creations in Christ Jesus, how can we condone this wickedness? It's time to stop it, brothers and sisters. Yep, I'm going there. I'm going there. I've been going there. I praise God. I will tell you what I praise God for. I thank God for all of you and those in my church family. We're getting ready at Mother's Day to do the second baby bottle campaign. And you guys, you know, there's a link here you can give to. Um, there have been, I'm going to tell you, and for their protection, I will not disclose their name. There are babies that have been saved from what people call abortion, which is the murder of the unborn. That's right, because of the efforts here, because of your prayers, because of what you guys have done, I want you to know God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. We will keep on occupying and redeeming, but we don't have long because he's coming. Wow, I'm, I will be doing the prayer here in just a little while, and I'll give the blessing there. I've got a news update I need to do, too, before then. So I just had to get on here. My Even last night as I woke up, I had my two. I still have my two precious grandsons with me. Actually, they're playing right now. They're being quiet. And I want you to know that um, God loves you so much. He loves you so much. And he is love. 1 John 4, 7, and 8. 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. God is love. And they're going to know us by our love. Oh, brothers and sisters, don't, don't misappropriate what love is. Don't misappropriate what being nice is versus being kind, which kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Don't, don't misappropriate that. So many people say, I'm being nice. I don't want to offend them. Abortion is murder. And it's shameful. It's disgraceful that our government and our leaders, President Trump, if you by chance get this, I pray for you. And I pray that you defund Planned Parenthood as you promised to do. It is the murder of the unborn. And you have the power and capacity to do it. I'm praying for you. I can't imagine what it is. The principalities over Washington. But I pray. I beseech the president. I implore our leaders. I implore believers. Rise up with our voices. Let's make a difference. Let's stop this evil now. God bless you guys. Have an awesome rest of your day.